Security, Security, Common Security, Common Security, Security, Common Security, and Sanity. Security, Security, Common Security, Common Security, and Sanity. Well, hi there, Nick here, and uh, thank you for watching. Uh, now, as you can probably see, the uh, boxes are filling up and the shelves are looking bare, which can only mean one thing, yeah, we're moving house. So this will probably be the last uh, one of these videos that I get a chance to do for a little while till we get established in the new place. Um, but uh, today, I really, I want to follow up on the last video that I did. Um, which was where I showed you my latest transceiver and it was all spread out on the bench and I showed you about all the different bits and what they did, etc. Uh, and I showed you the enclosure that it was going into, the, the, the red bread bin. Uh, and I did what I said, so I broke it all apart. Um, I put it all uh, in the bread bin. Um, I fixed the problems, <laughs> got it working again, and then put it on the air. Uh, and really that's what you're going to see uh, in this video. Now I call this rig the optimizer. Uh, because it's taken me ages to build because I spent a lot of time on each stage uh, just tweaking it and trying to get it as, as good as I could get it really, you know, to be at the best that I, that I could do uh, and, and to, to, to pay some attention to the whole signal chain and, and try not to inject too much noise into it and try and get as clean a signal as possible. Um, so it, it's, there's been an awful lot of tweaking uh, <laughs> going on uh, uh, with this rig, uh, which is why it's called the optimizer. Um, anyway, so you're going to uh, have a chance to uh, have a look at it, what it looks like now, uh, and I'll point out a few of the problems that I had to uh, fix, and then you'll have a chance to uh, decide for yourself, because you'll get a chance to hear what it sounds like on receive and on transmit, and I'll say a little bit more about that in a moment. So, hope you enjoy. So here we are. Here is the optimizer, and um, uh, as you can see, uh, <laughs> with the B and the D there, um, on the uh, the last uh, bread bin I used, uh, the lettering was like little plastic inserts that you could just kind of pick off, and uh, and they were fine. Uh, these are not; these are paint, uh, and I did think about kind of repainting it or whatever, but I thought, well, you know, at the end of the day. Um, it is a bread bin, and you know I'm not ashamed of that. It, it is what it is, and uh, that's kind of testimony to uh, uh, to what it started life as. And also, it did occur to me that BD could stand for bidirectional, and if this rig is anything, then that is uh, at its heart. So, uh, so I've kept that, and it's fairly symmetrical anyway around the uh, the uh, LCD display. So that's that's not a problem. Um, so pretty simple on the front, as you'll see. We've got the um, the S meter, which uh, isn't uh, desperately accurate and will change from band to band, but gives you an idea, gives you an indication. And underneath that is the uh, uh, mic uh, jack, and actually the microphone uh, it comes down here. This it comes down here. This is my PTT. I've got a separate little PTT here, and the microphone itself comes around there, around there, around there, and up to there. So uh, when I want to um, key up, I just press that little uh, switch on there, which is uh, quite handy. Um, underneath that, I've got a uh, a little tuning tone switch, so that will uh, key up the little audio oscillator and give me um, uh, about a 900 hertz uh, tuning tone. Uh, there's a little uh, LED that illuminates when we're on transmit. Uh, you've got the display here. That's the main tuning control, and then just the volume. So that's uh, pretty simple. Um, you'll see I mounted the speaker uh, on the top uh, there, just a few holes there on the top, it's inside the lid. Um, and I'll just show you what it looks like round the back. So round the back it's even more simple. There's just the, uh, the on-off power switch which uh, illuminates. Um, there's the power connector and I'm running this at 13.8 volts straight from my linear power supply in the shack. Um, then there's just your, your uh, RF in and out and that little 3.5mm uh, jack that is for connecting to my linear amplifier so um, uh, it, it just uh, corresponds to uh, to keying the amplifier so uh, I, I've just got a, a little audio lead that I use for that uh, and that works very well so um, yeah so really um, uh, very simple design 
Um, so I will uh, pop the lid. That's the great thing about having a bread bin. <laughs> it's easy to do and show you what it looks like inside. Okay, well, here it is inside. You'll see the uh, four ohm speaker uh, connected there in the lid. And um, as you can see, um, it's all gone in quite well, really, and uh, a fair bit of space there. It's not uh, as compact uh, as some um, I've had to build. Um, and, uh, yeah, so uh, I did have some issues uh, putting it uh, together and getting it to work again, which I have in, I think, every single rig I've ever built. Um, the issues I had uh, with this one uh, were with the IF amps, which are over here, um, and actually, uh, they're, they're these um, bi-directional termination insensitive uh, amplifiers, the Wes Hayward ones, which work very well. Um, but they work very well because they're balanced, and that's that's how the signal goes in the right direction at the right time um, when you apply bias. But there, there needs to be a, a balance because the signal needs to see a, a higher resistance in one way than another. I'd kind of messed up that balance and managed to get away with it just about when I was using this rig just spread eagled on the on the bench. Um, but I'd got an extra stage I piggybacked on. That was the one I built in that separate video. Um, but it didn't like it and it was causing instability as soon as it was in, in the, uh, the case. So I had to do the slightly more unglamorous method of, um, of putting this module, which I can show you really, kind of on top of them and used a couple of relays and that's just because I needed more um, gain on uh, on receive than I did on transmit. So uh, uh, and that's the crystal filter there, that's kind of bolted to the uh, to the side. Now actually there's a story here because this is the other problem. You'll, you'll see there there's two, two metal uh, screws and two plastic ones. As I was investigating the problems um, with, with this uh, instability in the IF stage uh, I unscrewed this, uh, but I lost one of the nuts, one of the metal nuts. It, it dropped down. I couldn't find it. And I thought, well, it's probably just rolled into a corner. Well, big mistake, uh, because, you know, <laughs> as luck would have it, it fell exactly on, and you can't see, but underneath all of that um, is the microphone amplifier. I I just, oh, yeah, you can just about see it there. Yeah, down the bottom, you can just see the potentiometer and the little... Um, uh, uh, SSM uh, 2167 I think it is uh, chip with the compression on well up a bit further you can't see is a voltage regulator and would you believe this nut fell right across the legs <laughs> of the voltage regulator and I could only assume there was a wisp of magic smoke uh, not a lot but there was a, there was a wisp uh, it didn't go pop or anything but um uh, it was dead as a doornail, the microphone amplifier, and I can just assume that, uh, I mean, that voltage regulator was there to, to turn the 13.7 volts down into 5, uh, and I, I'm reckoning it must have just shorted it, and, and I put 13.8 volts through it, which it didn't like very much. Uh, so uh, so that died, so I just had to order another one of those and put that in, and then it worked fine. Um, now... Uh, the blue tack there, he's <laughs> performing a great job there of holding the uh, uh, the second mixer um, steady. Um, it's because I'm swapping filters. So you, I've got here, you can see stacks of filters, um, and actually uh, that first stack uh, is for 40 meters, and the second stack is for 20 meters. I've got the 80 meters one in here, and what I mean by that is is the one I'm looking at here now, underneath that mixer with the blue tack. That is the uh, the bidirectional bandpass filter. So I've got one of those, obviously, for each band. And then over here are actually two filters. One one's enclosed in a case, and one's uh, just uh, on top of it. Um, so in the case is the transmit um, low pass filter, and on top of it is an extra bandpass filter, which is actually going in between. Uh, the driver and the PA just to give me a, a little bit more filtering, clean that signal up so I haven't got too many uh, uh, intermodulation uh, products uh, making their way through onto my final signal. Um, uh, now I didn't need it for 40 meters actually, so which is why the 40 meter one uh, uh, has got nothing piggybacked on top, I just uh, connect them together. 
Uh, so it is a bit of a pain because I have to keep unplugging all these things and swapping them in and out. And uh, I guess at some stage uh, they will fail, connectors will fail doing that. So it's, it's not a great plan going forward. Um, but it does work and, and works well on, on 80, 40 and 20. Um, which uh, hopefully you will hear soon. So that's what it looks like now. And uh, yeah, and uh, you'll get a chance to actually uh, make up your own mind. So that's what it looks like, but what's it sound like? Well, you're going to find out because I made a recording last night just tuning down the 80 meter band, and you'll hear there's some strong signals on there. Um, the hissing that you're hearing, a, a lot of that is not actually coming from the rig. It's it's an artifact of, of trying to get the volume of the recording high enough because I didn't have the volume of the rig cranked up too high because it's fairly late at night and I didn't want to uh, wake anybody else up. Um, but I, I think it gives you an idea. It's actually very quiet when, when you listen to it. Uh, and the noise that you hear uh, is actually just noise of the band. It's it's not an artifact of the uh, uh, of the rig. It's just the, the natural band noise. Anyway, um, so uh, yeah, uh, this was eighty meters last night. Kilo, kilo. 
So, as you can hear, there were some strong stations uh, on 80 metres last night. And actually, that last uh, station, uh, G7VKK, Peter, I actually went back and worked him. And we had a chat for about 20 minutes. It's, it was really good. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, it was working well. Now, you're going to hear now what it sounds like on transmit. And actually, um, I did think about recording a, a live QSO. Um but then you wouldn't actually, or you just hear me speaking, you know, and you might hear the other person say some nice things uh, about the rig. But I thought what I wanted you to do was to actually be able to hear what it actually sounds like if you were on the other end uh, of a QSO uh, with me. Um, so what I've done is I uh, made a test uh, transmission, a station test. Uh, uh, last night and recorded myself on the Hack Green Web SDR. Uh, and so what you'll do is you'll actually be able to hear um, uh, exactly my signal as it sounded uh, received at Hack Green. Um, and uh, you'll be able to see on the waterfall uh, as well uh, how my signal compared uh, with some of the other very strong signals that are actually on the band uh, that day. So uh, now the thing to look out for, if you're not familiar with these web SDRs, is the, the yellow marker, the, like a bracket on, on the bottom. That's the frequency I'm going to be transmitting on. It's uh, 3730 kilohertz. Uh, you'll see it there. So if you watch then, and as soon as I start to speak, you'll see my signal spring into life. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, judge for yourself. Frequency in use, please. Mike Zero November Tango Victor asking, is the frequency in use, please? Nothing heard. Testing, testing, a one two, a one two, a station test, station test only. Mike Zero November Tango Victor. Mike Zero November Tango Victor, station test. Station test. Testing, testing, 12 watts, peak envelope power, homebrew transceiver. 1 2, 1 2. Testing, testing, 1 2, 1 2. Mic 0, November, Tango Victor, and frequency now clear. So there you have it, and uh, yeah. All in all, I was pretty pleased with that. And uh, yeah, so um, uh, listen out for me <laughs> on uh, 20, 40 and 80. And uh, thank you again for watching. And I will see you on the next video. Bye bye, 73.